Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Leanna and today we're talking about something I call brand blindness. And I'm going to explain that in a second, but also at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about offers. What I do, what strategy to accept, to counter and all that kind of thing so that I'm still making profit and I'm not wasting my time with offers. All right. First, brand blindness. What is that? This is just a, a term I made up to explain how you see a blind, a brand, a blind. You see a brand. You see a brand. I'll be okay. You see a brand, and you know that so and so talked about, it and so and so talked about, it and it's a bolo and all this, and you just automatically pick it up without doing any research. You don't look it up. You don't do your sell through rates. You do nothing. You just go. I know that brand. It's a great brand. It's going to sell. You bring it home and it doesn't sell. That's happened to me because within the brand, certain styles just don't sell. Um, if it's an older style, it may not sell. It could be that that brand, for instance, Aritzia. I can't sell Aritzia to, to save my life right now. And I think it's because I don't have access to the newer styles. Anything that I can pick up is an older style that nobody really wants anymore. So I don't have a lot of luck with Aritzia. Doesn't mean it's a bad brand. I think it's a fantastic brand. But here where I live, I have older styles and the thrift stores still market way up that there's no wiggle room. Now I might pick it up at the bins because it's only going to cost me a dollar and I still have some wiggle room because some of the older styles still sell a little bit but it's not what I would consider a bolo because you have to look at the style, the age, you know, the condition and all that kind of stuff as well. So when you get brand blinded, you only see the brand and you don't do your own research. You really need to learn what you have access to in your area and know whether or not it's worth it. So for instance, with me, with Aritzia, if I find a piece at the thrift store, and the price is okay, I look it up and I still do my research and I look to see if that, you know, the actual style is still selling, the size matters because I get access to a lot of extra, extra smalls, extra smalls and smalls. And for me, those sizes just don't sell well for me. And you know what, I will always say for me, they could very well sell for you like hotcakes. You know what? You got to find your own sort of rhythm with the brands and with the sizes. You got to know your own business is really what I'm saying. Just because someone says, oh, this is a bolo doesn't mean that what you can find within that brand is a bolo. Always do your own research. All right. When we first started out, I was, you know, binge watching tons of YouTube and there was nothing wrong with any of the information people were giving us. We were, you know, writing down brands. We were like, oh, I got to find this brand. And you know what? I would find it and I would pick it up because whoever said, oh, this is a great brand and it would not sell for me. So always do your own research. I think knowing brands and knowing bolos in a sense, bolos is a term Bolos in itself is be on the lookout for. It's not be on the lookout for and buy it. It's just be on the lookout for. And I think that's a good sort of rule of thumb. Keep the brands in your brain and yeah, absolutely look it up when you find it because some of them can really be good money, but some of them you just don't have the right style in order to make good on that promise of it being a bolo. Um, <coughs> excuse me. What brands don't I pick up anymore? Well, you know what? For me, it's weird because I don't like American Eagle because first of all, my, my thrift stores will mark them up. I don't get them for a good cost of goods. They don't sell for a lot of money and it just doesn't really sell for me. So I don't pick up a lot of American Eagle unless maybe it's plus size or I can get it at the bin sometimes, stuff like that if the style's sort of really trendy. But besides that, I don't pick it up anymore because it just doesn't sell for me. Because the styles that I have access to just aren't that, you know, wanted. They're not, they're not selling. That's all it is. Other ones that I won't be picking up, Tahari. I do have a couple of Tahari in my closet. And Tahari used to sell for me really well. Um, I do have a linen dress and I picked it up because it was linen, not necessarily because it was Tahari. 
So even within some of these brands that I don't want to pick up, depending on the material, the size, the style, I might still pick it up depending on cost of goods and condition, of course. Michael Kors just, it's just, you know what, it's such a weird brand. I just, I don't like it. Um, <laughs> mainly because I just don't like the style to begin with. But honestly, I haven't sold a lot. I think I've only sold two pieces of Michael Kors. So it makes me know that what I have access to just isn't trendy enough. Um, another one that was, um, another, I'll, leave to, I'll leave two to the end because they're kind of surprising to me. Another one is Brunette the Label. A few years ago, I, I did pick up one piece because that's what I found. It sold really quickly. I have one in my closet right now that I can't give away. So it could be the size. It could be that it's black. I don't know. The last two I want to talk about is they're interesting. They're kind of surprising to me because they're, they're a brand that I'm like, I get excited to find. And one is Cole Haan and the other one is Free People. I love Free People. If I could get the, the newer styles and get them cheap enough that you know what I can make profit I would absolutely pick up free people because it's still in fashion but I just what I pick up what I can pick up just isn't selling Cole Haan Cole Haan is an interesting one for me because it's a quality brand and I myself love the brand but I know that right now my sell through rate is about 50% in my closets with Cole Haan and I do have one pair of shoes that I thought for sure would sell like that. And I keep holding on to them and I, I'm going to have to give, let them go soon because um, they've been around for a while. They're beautiful black suede. They're a pump. They're, you know what? I don't know, but they're just not selling for me. And I can't figure out why. Oh, um, so, you know what? Cole Haan is one of those brands that before I get excited, I will be doing my sell through rates. I will be doing a comp search I will be looking on different platforms to see if it sells better um, which is another thing to keep in mind just because if you do all your comp searches say on tour on tour on, on Poshmark maybe check and like if you sell on eBay check your other platforms as well because I know that sometimes something on eBay will have really bad sort of sell-through rate or even a sale price, an average sale price, but on Poshmark, it sells really, really well for a higher amount. So double check your platforms to see it's where it's gonna sell better. What will I always pick up? There's not a ton. I will always do my research on certain brands. Um, Torrid, because right now, and Torrid's interesting because a year ago, I'm no longer picking up Torrid. Torrid doesn't sell for me. Um, it, the thrift stores were really marking it up like ten twelve dollars for a shirt and I just didn't have enough meat on the bone to make profit with that with those kinds of costs of goods so a year ago I wasn't picking up Torrid anymore but this year Torrid is my number one seller one of and I can now f source it between three and five dollars which is much much better a lot more meat on the bone with Torrid, though, I do try to, I love picking up newer tags, but I also want the newer styles. So I try not to pick up anything older than 2019, 2020, because with Torrid, the, the styles come and go, but it's not the most quality sort of brand. So there's more problems with the older items. They're, they're frayed or there's holes or there's, there's things missing, things like that. So I do try to stay with the newer styles, 2020 and up. Um, vintage pieces, you know, quality vintage pieces, linen, wool, uh, silk. I will always look them. I will not necessarily look vintage up because it's kind of a different kind of ball game with vintage. I'll look at the style. I'll see if it's trendy see what what season it is i'm not necessarily picking up wool skirts in the middle of summer but those are things that i will always look at for sure and sometimes we'll just pick them up because i love to do that another one is nyx depending on the condition and the price i will pick nyx up all the time because it does sell well for me it's like it sells fast for me which is a good thing another one that i want to talk about is this bombay company and in this video, if I remember, because <laughs> I know in the last one I forgot, I will put a picture up here 
of something what I of what I mean. So I sold just recently sold this jewelry box. It had the key and everything. It was beautiful. The thrift store only was three seventy nine, I think, and I sold it for was it forty five dollars? It'll be up there. I promise it'll be up there. So this is a brand that I don't find often. I did find one at a, a online an online auction and it sold really fast for really good money. And then this jewelry box was listed for a couple of days and that was it. So that is a brand that I will always pick up depending on condition, depending on whether or not um, the price is right. <laughs> I had to think about that. All right, so with, <clears throat> with being brand blind. Learn what sells in your closet because that is what you have access to. Always double check. If you hear somebody with a bow low list, just double check when you find that brand. Keep the brands in mind because it is a really good tool. But double check that the style that you have will sell. Check your sell through rates, check your, check your style, see if it'll sell for you. Because just because somebody in California finds this brand, finds a certain style of this brand, doesn't mean that it's going to be the same for you. Know what you're dealing with. Know what you have access to. And you know what? Just remember to do your own research. Always. Because this is your business and your business is based on where you are, what you have access to, and everything else. Remember that. All right. We're now going to talk about offers. Because I had a situation... It's not a situation. It's not a bad thing. I had listed a, a shirt and I had it listed for $50 and somebody offered me 30 And I thought, eh, it's okay. It's not, you know, not a horrible offer, but there was like six likers on it or something. I'm like, okay, I'm going to leave it for a couple of hours just to see if somebody else sort of jumps in on it. And I was waiting for that couple of hours and I thought, you know, it's not bad. I know I didn't pay much for it. So I went and I looked at the at the listing again and realized that there was another offer on it. And what it was is because I use Sidekick, somebody liked the item and they sent out an offer. And at this point in time, I have my offer set to 25% off and the first shipping discount, whatever it was. And I think it was a Canadian sale. So I sent out an offer for $37 with $9.99 shipping. So I went and I looked at both of these offers. So I had one, the buyer offered me $30 and the other one where I offered 37 plus a shipping discount. The difference in the earnings, and this is what I went to check, was $2.10. So with the offer I sent out, I would have made $26.10, I believe it was. With the offer from the buyer, I would have made $24. So I sat there, I went, well, first of all, I could wait for this other person to see if they would actually accept $37 plus whatever and make two extra dollars, or I could actually just accept the offer and go, yeah, you know what? I made a sale. So for me, at that point in time, quibbling over $2.10, not worth it. Absolutely not worth my time. Having an offer from a buyer is a bird in the hand. I want that sale. Could I have waited and maybe made an extra $10 on that t-shirt? Probably. But you know what? It's gone. It's a sale. It's profit in my pocket. And I'm happy with that. Sometimes you have to look at what you are doing with offers because really and truly, if you have something listed for $30 and somebody offers you $15, yeah, you know what? You can get really mad and go, that's a low ball or whatever it is you think it is. You come back at whatever you're comfortable with. Say it's 25. You know, that's not bad. You come, you came down a bit. You want them to come up. So you know what? Some people might come up to 20. I'm happy with that. I always price my items with enough wiggle room that the buyer still thinks they're getting, well, the buyer thinks or knows they're getting a really good deal because I've come down enough in my price for them, but I'm also making profit. Knowing what to price items at is really important. It's an important part of your business because you don't want to undersell your stuff. You don't want to undercut your price, but you also don't want to overestimate because you know what? If you have something that is only selling for $25 listed at a hundred, people are going to think you're crazy and they're not, I, I don't see you getting offers on that. Maybe you will. I don't know. So it's a sort of this sort of learning 
curve where you have to really think about what should I be pricing out? What do I really want to make out of this item? And that is done when you're listing. So you have to remember that when you're listing to actually do that math in your head so that you don't sit there and go back and forth for a couple of dollars because it's not worth your time. It really isn't. Anyway, that is it for today. I hope everybody's had a good week. It is really cold here for here. I mean, it's not horrible. It could be in worse places. Uh, but Paul and I went out today and we went to three, three different thrift stores. We initiated a challenge between us. And on Friday, I'm going to show you what we got and what the challenge is and who's going to win. Who's going to win this challenge? Um, I have a feeling it might be Paul because Paul is really good at sourcing. <laughs> anyway, that is it for today. I hope everybody has a fantastic week. I'll see you next time. Bye.